What's going on? It's Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me uh, here in Atlanta uh, to do a show. So um, I don't know if anybody is in Atlanta that still need tickets, but the venue is expandable. So we can accommodate if you decide that you want to get tickets and pull up and you're watching this video from Atlanta. But more importantly, get your tickets to come and kick it with me in Detroit, December 14th. And we're going to get it popping. But outside of that, make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. I got some awesome live streams and some videos that's coming up this upcoming month. This month in particular, it is November this month, uh, right after we get back. And then uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to the rest of the year. And then we're gearing up for 2025. But forget all of that for a minute. Let's kick it and let's have a conversation about this upcoming election. Because you know... This Tuesday, let's see, it's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, two, three days. And three days, we are going to determine who's going to be president of the United States of America for the next four years, all right? On one end, we got Kamala Harris, who has existed in, you know, availability for president of the United States of America, for the most part, has been the, the tie-breaking vote for most votes president of the senate a lot of people don't even really understand what the vice president does but it's an extension of the president so what you see happening in office often at times you can also attribute to the vice president that's why a lot of people say well if you're proposing to do all of this different stuff aside from how you're going to pay for it and how you're going to get there why wasn't it done within the last three and a half years right that's why people are asking that question but the vice president is basically an extension of the president and they're the president of the Senate. So when there's a deadlock or a tie, then she's the tie breaking vote. And then she determines legislation that ha happens on a large scale. And then what happens in the United States of America. So that's basically how that goes. Right. And so she's cast more tie breaking votes than any other president in history. We know that prior to her becoming a nominee for president of the United States of America, that she had the lowest, lowest of voter approval rate, and it was very difficult. But you got Kamala Harris, who just 90 days ago, nobody was really paying attention to her outside of what was going on at the border, and we still haven't gotten any resolution from that. Conversely, we got Trump, who stopped everything that was going on at the border and was allowing for people to come in here legally. Of course, you're always going to have illegal migrants coming through and all of that, but the flow of illegal migrants had largely been standstill, and he was asking Congress for the same thing that they're proposing now on the Democratic side, to fund more border agents, to have a stronger border wall, the whole nine yards. But forget the border, forget all of that, right? If we just go based off of optics, if we go based off of history, if we go based off of hindsight and we just pay attention to what's happened over the last eight years total and we just go based off of the eye test and what your life was like in the Donald Trump era versus the Biden and Kamala Harris era and she don't even want Biden on the campaign trail with her. Who would you vote for? Remove the visibility of the candidates, remove the white man, the black woman, the identity, remove the male and female gender, and just go based off of purely experience, just pure experience of what you've experienced in the past. Because her campaign is, we not going back. His campaign is, we going back to what we was doing and what made America great in the first place. What would you say, who would you vote for just based off of that alone? For me, I'm voting for Donald Trump, or I already voted for Donald Trump. But here's the caveat. Here's the kicker in this whole conversation that you and I are having. Although I hope he wins, because I think that it will be best for America, meaning that I'm taking myself out of it, and I'm considering what's best for everybody. Because for me, I'm going to win, and I'm going to benefit no matter what. They're not going to raise taxes on me. I'm not going to pay more taxes under Kamala Harris, regardless of the fact that I'm a high earner. They say if you make over $400,000, none of this is going to affect me because I'm smart. I'm a business owner. I got tax strategies and all of that. So 
take me out of the equation. What y'all think is going to come more out of our pockets, it's not. I'm not worried about it. I want what's best for the country. And I don't believe, I don't think in my heart that we deserve it. Although I want him to win and I voted for him, I don't believe that we deserve a Donald Trump presidency. The very fact that we did not vote for him in 2020 is proof and evidence that if people continue to have a good time, they'll never appreciate a good thing. We didn't even know how good we got it until we realized through this administration that it's as bad as it is. I believe that if she gets elected, it's going to be exponentially worse because not only are you going to get more of what we already got, it's going to be worse because we only got a sample size over these last three and a half years. You can't tax your way to riches. We already see that. Have to be more fiscally responsible. Got to take care of business and we got to manage more effectively what we already have. You can't keep letting people come over into the border. Can't keep going on forever wars with Russia and China and funding proxy wars with Israel. You can't keep doing it. You got to have some level of diplomacy deployed so that we can get ourselves out of it because for one of the first times in my lifetime, we had unprecedented time and peace when Donald Trump was in office. And it's like we forget it because we got too relaxed and we didn't turn out the way that we wanted to, that we were supposed to. And I don't know why in 2020, but it was dumb. It was absolutely stupid. But now we get the sample size of it. We got the sample size of it. And now we're about to get the real thing. Honestly, I believe that we're about to get the real thing. So I don't. I don't believe that we deserve it. He never had to run in the first place. He was already going to be a billionaire. He could have been loved and appreciated way more had he never threw his hat in the ring in 2016 and become president of the United States of America, which is one of the reasons why I truly believe that he loves this country. And I don't ever want to go with somebody that's a lifetime politician. I don't. That has never gotten a private paycheck, a paycheck from the private sector. They don't understand business, but they propose in business proposals. I'm just not going for it. So, you know, I know a lot of black people say dumb stuff like he's going to enslave us again or some extreme version. Police is going to be killing everybody. Then how come they didn't do it in 2016, 17, 18 and 19? Why didn't they do it then? But again, you know, that's just the way that we live. That's the way that things go. And I believe that people, when given the option to choose for themselves, often at times they choose wrong until they suffer enough to be able to appreciate what they had before it was gone. We gonna see what happens. Again, I don't believe that this country deserves a good president. I believe that people deserve to suffer in the way of whatever it is that they voted for. That's why I don't feel sorry for people in Chicago when the mayor of Chicago yesterday proposed that they raise taxes by over $300 million, even though his campaign promise, what he ran on, was we're not going to raise any new taxes. People deserve it. I don't think that people, I think they need to build the wall around these blue cities and prevent people from leaving for the thing that they voted for. If you vote in an election, in a local election, I believe you should have to stay there for the entirety of the time of the person that you voted for, that's going to be there. If you voted for a candidate that wind up winning, then you should reap the rewards or you should suffer as a result of the thing that you voted for. That's what I believe. No new residency. Nope. We need to have strong borders around these states to prevent people from leaving and going to turn in Texas into California after California's ruined California. That's what I believe. I love you. I appreciate y'all. Again, get your tickets to come and kick it with me in Detroit on December 14th. It's going to be awesome. Um, should be an interesting election. Of course, I'll be at the forefront monitoring, paying attention to what's going on. And we're going to have a conversation before, during, and after this whole election. 
I love you. I appreciate you. Make sure you tap into the Patreon and then make sure you uh, get your Teach Hanley. 40% off your first order, 20% off for life. I love you. I appreciate you. I'm going to holler at you later. Peace.